This is the 3D diagram of the heart and the enthoving triangle, which is consist of 12 leads. Okay, uh, we were saying that two lead number two, three, and AVF are looking the inferior wall of the heart. So now here you can see that how does it looks uh, the inferior wall of the heart. It is going from down to up, right? It is going from down to up like this, right? And then V1, V2 are looking at the septum, especially interventricular septum. And I have drawn this uh, heart a little bit uh, above the proportion. It should be uh, drawn a little bit down here. I just put my pencil drawing above the original diagram. It was actually, this is the atria. So looking, looking at atrias, V1 and V2 are also looking at uh, atrias. Then v3 v4 are looking the interior wall of the heart okay after that we are remaining with v5 v1 v oh sorry v5 1 v6 and avl which is looking the lateral wall of the heart so and that's it with the 3d structure of the enthoven triangle now it's time to show you the normal ecg waveform uh, it will consist of 12 leads all together. See, one, two, three, AVR, AVL, AVF, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. These three step traps all together consist of 12 leads, okay? Uh, the remaining lower three leads, we are not going to discuss it. Why? Because these are actually the above, extended form of the above leads. V1, we have taken the whole V1 strip, right? Then two, we have taken the whole two straps lead number two okay then v5 we take these straps for some purposes like for example we take the lead two to find the heart rate to find the rhythm of the heart okay so a most important one among all these long straps is lead number two Another thing that I want to discuss with you guys is the R wave progression, okay? How to recognize, is it normal R wave progression or there is any abnormality or pathology in the heart, okay? So uh, for that, we need to uh, take an example. Let's consider this is a road on which a car is coming from head to toe side okay and a person is standing over here this person will feel that this car is coming toward him but if you let this person stand over here then this person will feel that the car is going away from him uh, along with this road right same is the case with the uh, ECG when you put a lead over here and the action potential is coming from that side to this side this lead is going to make the waveform different from a lead if you put over here okay now let's understand it in the diagram form this is the heart okay this is the action potential coming like this now if you see from the avr side this action potential is going like this but if you see on it on the lead number two this action potential is coming to this side and what is the ecg waveform it is actually formed by these thing this is actually the vision of the leads these are the leads which is looking at the electric potential or the electrical activities of the heart and make these waveforms right so the electrical activities that is seen by AVR is completely opposite to your lead number two. It will make different waveform of the ECG than this. The same is the case with the V1 and V6C. V1 is looking at the heart from this side and V6 is looking like this, right? So the V1 is going to make different waveform of the ECG or you can say completely opposite of V6. Okay, now let's see the R wave progression. See, every lead is different 
from another we take v1 and v1 the and v1 the deflection is predominantly downward see it's coming down 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 and v2 see this this wave was too small over here it's too small it's now increasing right it's now increasing and this is the r wave we know that the upward deflection in the ecg is the r wave right now it is increasing slowly along with v1 v2 v3 if you look at the c the r wave is increasing and the v3 r wave is has increased more and at the same time this wave which is uh, which has a downward deflection right if i draw it on this paper this is p this is q this is r this is s and this is t this r wave upward deflection is slowly increasing over here from small to large see v1 this is small this is increasing and then v4 it is increasing more v5 it is increasing more and it has become the normal wave form over here see this is the r wave right and at the same time this wave which is called to be s wave in the normal is the downward deflection see this is the downward deflection this is the s wave so what should we call s wave the s wave is shortening itself when we go from v1 to v6 see this is the bigger one as compared to the r wave this is now slowly decreasing in size see slowly decreasing in size decreasing in size decreasing in size and here it comes to the small s wave this is known as the normal r wave progression and why it happens it happens when you rotate along the heart around the heart like this v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 the action potential seen by v1 is completely opposite to v6 see now we see that look at v1 in v1 the uh, predominant deflection is downward in v6 it will be opposite in v6 the predominant deflection is upward so this was the normal ECG waveform and remember one thing that we use lead number two as a reference lead, okay? Lead number two, see? This is P, this is Q, small Q, then R, then this is S, this is T, P, Q. Why we use it as a reference lead for lots of uh, you know, things like heart rate and uh, rhythm and... Uh, we use it also in the inferior wall mi we use it in the um, axis deviation because the waveform that actually we study uh, is normally the two lead number two and that's why we have taken lead number two as a full long strip along the ecg there is a single long strip also in the ecg just because we take it as a reference okay